or doesn't see it in the church around them? Any suggestions on? Well, of course, I think, I think it's uh, important to stay connected with the church. Uh, one of the uh, uh, little analogies I sometimes use in, in preaching is that uh, in the church, we're all in the, the boat, and the boat has lots of oars, and some people are stroking because they're all excited about the faith, and they're turned on by it, and they're pumped up, and, and some people are, are tired and worn out or are uh, have, have been dealt some kind of a a cruel blow and, and they don't know what end is up. And, uh, but they're still in the boat. The crucial thing is to stay in the boat because the boat's going forward all that time and, and to stay connected with the church. <laughs> a funny side of that analogy, some say, well, I'm imitating Christ and he was sleeping in the boat. I guess I could sleep too. <laughs> but the reality is we need the authority of the church to help us understand which aspect of Christ's life and words we are to imitate. That's right. And if we're separated from the church, we're sunk. Uh, we, I mean, we have to be connected with it. You bring us back to the mandate. The mandate to become a Catholic. There was a time in your early life you, where you saw you were in schism from the church, yes. but you felt it was comfortable enough that you could stay separate. But then, what changed you? you Provided the, the progress was being made, though. Yes. Of course, I mean, we were we thought we it's were headed in the right direction. trajectory home. Yes, we thought we were headed home. But what about the mandate? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the uh, for me the um, uh, as I said earlier, it, it sometimes when, when you pray for 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 clarity. Uh, you, you get answers in, in surprising ways, and uh, there was never any question that uh, that our Lord left one church uh, behind, and that we had to be in, in full communion. And I think that the uh, that the watershed really was the uh, the Church of England's voting to ordain women. I mean, that was the wake up bell yeah. for us. Yeah, and it wasn't so much specifically the ordination of women, was it? It was no. the it was this choice and the way they used authority. That's right. And their inability to get the question right, who do men say that I am? Yeah. If we get Jesus wrong, we get everything wrong. If you look at the reason that then you you decided instead of wait for the whole group of us to be reunited, that God's calling my family and I to come home. Look at all the reasons. What really jumps out at you is the reason to become Catholic, the reason to be a part of the Catholic Church. I had um, realized from my situation in the Episcopal Church that um, I needed to be where the Lord wanted me to be. I needed to be in the, in the body of believers um, that, that the Lord wanted me, the place he wanted me to be in was the Catholic Church. It, was e it would have been easier to do it without a flock because I didn't want to leave people behind. I probably would have done it earlier. But, so there were some constraints there. Uh, there were some practical constraints, too, and of course, in terms of uh, salary remuneration package. My gosh, when you think about it, Marcus, I had a couple of kids in college. At the time, I was suddenly faced with the possibility of no salary and all that, so there were constraints of that sort as well. Um, but um, I, th I think that that date in 1992 really was the, was the wake-up bell. Um, your family. You mentioned the family a couple times. Talk about your family and the journey. Well, I'm ha happily married for 30 plus years and, and three uh, grown children. Um, and one of the greatest parts of our story is that uh, uh, the children uh, were all received into the church when, uh, when we were, when Judy and I were. Um, it would have been very hard to um, say Mass and not have them able to receive as Episcopalians. Um, but they um, began studying the catechism, one with us, our group, one was at Notre Dame, and uh, we found her a good priest to study with, uh, Father Jenke, who's now the bishop, the auxiliary bishop of South Bend, Fort Wayne, and then um, our son Jonathan was uh, studying at Ohio University, and um, Jonathan was um, studying the catechism, Here, here's his kid in, in school at the age of 22, studying the catechism, which I certainly wasn't doing when I was 22 years old, but I knew he was serious about it. And, uh, and the cardinal at one point, when they were home for Christmas vacation, I said, Your Eminence, is there any way you can find some time to see them? Well, his schedule is awful, as you can imagine. And, um, but he found an hour for them. And as you know, why, when you're with him, why you have his undivided attention. And he said, what do you think about what your parents are doing? And they said, well, we, we really admire them. He said, so do I. He said, but you aren't part of the baggage. And he said, I, you know, it's your decision, and I don't want you to feel pressured automatically to come into the church. It has to be right 
for you as well. And of course, that's exactly what they needed to hear. He was a real pastor to them. 